Good afternoon. Welcome everyone. Can you hear me? Please uh, write in chat and confirm if you can hear me. Okay, great. It seems that you can hear me, so, okay. Uh, let's start. Uh, one more question. Can you see presentation in full screen? Okay, great. It seems that presentation is visible in full screen. So uh, let's start. Uh, my name is uh, Raden Kostovic. I work for uh, DV Power as a test engineer for circuit breaker uh, test equipment. Uh, as you can see, topic of today's webinar is uh, circuit breaker motion measurement. Uh, firstly, I'm going to explain reasons why to measure motion and velocity. Then um, we'll go through benefits that motion and velocity brings. Uh, after that, uh, I will show you types of transducer needed for this measurement. Uh, then we will go through a few uh, examples uh, of transducer mounting and uh, at the end, We'll have a few case studies regarding uh, this uh, uh, measurement. Interaction part. Uh, there are two uh, main reasons uh, why motion and velocity are measured. So let's say it is circuit breaker timing measurement indicate failure, but uh, it can be revealed by timing measurement uh, itself what component uh, of the circuit breaker is affected by failure. Uh, and the second reason is uh, to reveal failures that currently doesn't affect uh, on the circuit breaker operating time and performances, but to cause the wear of the circuit breaker moving uh, components. Uh, in this slide, we can see distribution of failures per component, uh, components of the circuit breaker. So, as can be seen, uh, the larger share of the failures occurs in the operating mechanism and the mechanical linkages. Uh, and to reveal these failures, motion and velocity measurement is mandatory in addition to the timing and coil current measurement. As you can see, this is according to a Seiger survey. Uh, generally speaking, there are three stages of the circuit breaker testing. Test preparation, testing and data uh, collection, and test results analysis. Uh, this uh, procedure is especially important for the motion measurement because uh, uh, the uh, most uh, yeah, the, the, actually, the uh, biggest uh, uh, task uh, in the field uh, is uh, to mount uh, the uh, transducer in convenient place uh, in the circuit breaker mechanism.
okay uh, so uh, when we talk about uh, test preparation especially about motion and velocity measurement we have to know what type of the circuit breaker we are testing uh, what kind of mechanism operates that circuit breaker what transducer we will use where to position transducer in convenient place in the operating mechanism or uh, some other shaft mounting key to be used uh, instrument and software capabilities in the following part of the presentation we'll see what types of the failure can be detected with the motion and velocity measurement as well as how to use motion and velocity curves and parameters for our analysis what can be seen from the motion and velocity measurement let's say from the motion and velocity uh, curves and uh, parameters which are extracted and calculated based on these curves uh, actually they can be used uh, to uh, reveal uh, uh, lack of lubrication in bearings or mechanical latch for mechanic mechanism energy release uh, to reveal unadjusted or broken operating springs, malfunctioning of puffer system or low SF6 gas pressure, oil leakage in damper or shock absorber, failure in mechanical linkages and uh, levers. result of motion travel measurement can be uh, analyzed by using uh, motion and velocity curves as well as parameters calculated based on these uh, uh, curves the best method for analysis is uh, uh, by comparing uh, these curves with their reference obtained during commissioning or routine tests and uh, uh, by comparing calculated parameters with reference parameters obtained by manufacturer in the figure right there is shown a uh, motion curves and uh, appropriate uh, parameters which are calculated based on the uh, main contact state and uh, uh, motion curve okay what zones of the motion curve are considered there are three uh, zones of the motion and velocity curves which are mandatory for analysis beginning of the motion arcing zone and uh, damping zone okay uh, these uh, mentioned three zones are highlighted on this graph where motion curve is shown simultaneously with coil current waveform uh, instant uh, of the arcing contact uh, uh, separation and arcing uh, uh, time uh, interval beginning of the moment uh, is uh, instant when the motion curve start to change which is uh, here in this um, orange or yellow, yellow cycle uh, arcing time uh, is uh, from the instant of the arcing contact separation when arc occurs until uh, the instant of the arcing uh, extinguishing here a damping zone is part of the motion curve when shock absorber activates and slow down moment of the circuit breaker pass to prevent mechanical stresses uh, at the end of the moment
Here is shown uh, how the instant of the motion beginning can be used for analysis uh, of the certain circuit breaker components condition. Uh, let's say delay of movement beginning can be related to the lack of lubrication of mechanical latch for spring energy release. So here, this is the moment uh, when the uh, coil plunger hits the, the uh, latch. So in this moment, uh, latch should start to re release mechanism and uh, uh, energy from the spring. But if here is a, a delay between these two instant, between this corner, when the uh, plunger hits the buffer and uh, hit the and hits the uh, latch, and the moment when the motion uh, start, if that delay is, is uh, increased compared to routine or the commissioning test that can indicate lack of lubrication of the mechanical latch or some other problem with the mechanical latch. The most important uh, parameter that should be calculated in arcing zone is uh, average velocity. This is because in this zone, when arcing occurs, circuit breaker contacts have to move fastest to successfully open main circuit and short circuit conditions. So uh, the universal zone for velocity calculation is about 10 milliseconds before or after contact uh, making uh, or separation. It depends of the uh, Fox, uh, whether that is uh, close or open operation. Okay, uh, how average velocity value can be uh, used for the assessment of the circuit breaker condition? value of average velocity out of uh, uh, specified that can be related to the following fields unadjusted or broken springs malfunctioning of buffer system very low sf6 gas pressure and lack of the lubrication in uh, bearings damping zone this is the zone where the movement uh, the accelerates until the circuit breaker's mobile contact contact uh, comes to complete stop. This part of motion is used for shock absorber condition assessment, and the two phenomena indicate the failure in the shock uh, absorbers. Uh, those are uh, under damping and uh, over damping. Insufficient damping or uh, under damping allows the moving parts to undergo shocks at the end of the travel, which causes severage damage. Severe damage. A sudden damping, where the kinetic energy developed by the moving parts of the circuit breaker is absorbed over very little time, causes damage like under damping. Okay, so here is shown how. Okay, someone is complaining that can't hear anything. Can you hear me? It seems that he, there are some uh, individual problems because most of you can hear me. Okay, let's continue.
Okay, here uh, in this uh, slide is shown how dumping uh, time and dumping distance are calculated. So they are, can be calculated uh, by sim simultaneously considering the motion and the velocity uh, curves. So uh, the dumping time is calculated from the instant when the velocity uh, suddenly changes, uh, actually suddenly decreasing until the end of the moments or the rest position, as you can see, see here. So based on those um, two, on these two instants, we can calculate dumping time. And uh, based on that dumping time, we can calculate um, dumping distance when we uh, extract it from the motion curve. Okay. <clears throat> Beside your average velocity and dumping time, uh, four more parameters are very important for the uh, analysis. And those are stroke, over travel, rebound, and contact wipe. All of them are calculated uh, and extracted based on the motion. Uh, curve and the uh, main contact state. Sorry. Okay, so stroke is uh, the distance between the open position of the circuit breaker and the final uh, close position <clears throat> or between um, close position of the circuit breaker and the final open position is the same. So uh, over travel, over travel is distance between the maximum temporary displacement of the circuit breaker main contacts beyond the final close or open uh, position. Rebound is distance between the lowest measured position that occurs directly after the over travel and the breaker's final close or open position, as you can see here. Um, contact wipe. Contact wipe is the distance between the instant when the contacts touch here and the breaker final close position. So in the other term, it's actually contact uh, overlapping distance. Okay. So, uh, in this slide, the relation between components and specific parameters that can be used for their analysis is given. So let's say for condition assessment of the shock absorber, dumping try, over travel and rebound uh, uh, analysis can be uh, used for operating spring assessment, uh, condition assessment, over travel, rebound, a stroke, uh, can be analyzed. Why for mechanical linkage and levers, contact wipe and stroke can indicate uh, if uh, there is some failure. Okay, now we are going to talk about types of transducer that are used for the motion measurement. So we 
can uh, classify the transducers first by output signals and in that way can they can be classified uh, uh, as analog or digital transducer and uh, by type of movement they can be classified as the linear or rotary type so here are examples of the rotary digital transducer in the left and the rotary analog transducer in the right figure here are examples of the uh, linear uh, analog transducers uh, side actuated and uh, rod type uh, the needed length of the transducers depend uh, on the type of the circuit breaker tested displacement may differ in different types of the circuit breakers the term displacement is uh, defined by the start and uh, the end position of the moving contacts in the majority uh, of circuit breaker types one main contact and one arcing contact are movable required length of the transducer is uh, calculated according to this uh, formula uh, as you can see the easiest way to calculate a minimal displacement uh, of ss6 circuit breaker is to place uh, uh, kilovolts with millimeters and even better way is to know exact displacement for that type of the circuit breaker uh, this correction factor k is uh, uh, 1.2 and uh, over travel uh, maximum value is uh, 15 millimeters so uh, for example for circuit breaker of the uh, voltage range uh, 72.5 kilovolts circuit breaker has a minimal displacement of around uh, 75 millimeters or uh, 2.95 inches uh, manufacturers also include the safety factor when calculating this distance this factor is uh, one uh, I uh, already talked about in this case the safety factor k is equal 1.2 and should be always considered also a calculation should include our travel during closing and our travel during uh, the opening operation usually uh, over travel during uh, the closing operation is uh, longer and it's about uh, 15 millimeters on both sides so according to this formula uh, the needed length of transducer uh, should be 126 millimeters uh, this value needs to be rounded up to the first bigger size of the transducers available okay uh, here is the list of the minimal displacement for oil circuit breakers and different uh, nominal voltage ranges so for a circuit breaker of the rated voltage uh, 69 kilovolts the minimal displacement is uh, 380 millimeters while for the circuit breakers of the voltage range 121 kilovolt and 145 kilovolts the minimal displacement is 400 um, millimeters and uh, when we insert uh, this uh, data in the formula let's say for the circuit breaker of the late rated voltage of the rated voltage uh, uh, 69 kilovolts uh, the needle length of the transducer is uh, 492 millimeters if we round up this value to the uh, first bigger size uh, it means that we have to select transducer of the nominal length of the 500 millimeters
Okay, here is actually the question uh, in chat. What about uh, oil circuit breaker of rated voltage 145 kilovolts? So, uh, in the previous slide, uh, as you can see, we uh, had a minimal displacement uh, is about. Uh, 400 okay and uh, if we insert that in this formula mm -hmm. we'll have uh, yeah we'll have actually the length over the 500 millimeters Okay, we actually can uh, calculate it. <clears throat> 400 plus uh, 2T and multiplied by 1.2. It is actually um, 430. Uh, plus um, HG3 and it's uh, uh, length of transducer 520 uh, uh, millimeters if I calculated uh, good so in that uh, case you will need a transducer probably about uh, uh, 600 millimeters for the, that type of the circuit breaker, which rated voltage uh, 145 uh, kilovolts. Okay, we can go further. A linear transducer for, va for vacuum circuit breaker should be able to measure the displacement of up to 100 millimeters. Okay. Let's go further. Now uh, I'm going to show some examples of the transducer uh, mounting. For many years, breaker contact motion or travel has been considered uh, one of the most important parameters for for checking a breaker's interrupting capacity. Some types of breakers are accompanied by instructions that explain how to mount a motion transducer and some are not. There is uh, therefore a need for a few uh, simple guidelines for selecting the right type uh, of transducer and the location on the breaker where measurements are to be taken. But always, we need to have in mind what breaker we are testing, what transducer we will use, where to position transducer, and uh, mount the kit to be used. Uh, in this slide, uh, transducer mount the kit is uh, shown, and as you can see, it is consisted uh, from the clamping base, articulated arm, carrier, coupling and mechanical adapter. So carrier or air profile is used to carry the uh, rotary transducer. Articulated arm is used to adjust the position of the carrier together with the rotary transducer. While clamping base is used to firm uh, uh, articulated arm together with the carrier air profile and transducer to do some solid based on the construction of the circuit breaker. And this uh, coupling here is used to connect the shaft of the 
transducer to the shaft, uh, to the rotary shaft of the circuit breaker. Uh, but uh, we had a mechanical adapter that should be uh, that should be um, connected to the uh, center of the rotating lever or rotating shaft in the circuit breaker mechanism or the lever. So the coupling uh, actually connects the shaft of the rotary transducer to the mechanical adapter, which is connected to the center of the circuit breaker rotating shaft. A uh, rotary transducer converter is uh, actually used to measure linear motion with the rotary transducer. And here is also one example of the carrier for analog rotary transducer. Okay, uh, universal uh, transducer mounting kit uh, can be uh, packed in one uh, case, and as you can see, it, it can be it is consisted from two clamping bays, small and big, two articulated uh, arms, a magnet, here, uh, as you can see, uh, the power can offer three phase rotary digital transducer set, which consists of the three rotary transducers needed to measure motion on three poles of circuit breaker, three articulated arms, three clamping bases, three coupling, and three magnet needed for the mounting of the all three transducers. Also, there is a Three phase linear analog transducer kit. And for also for the mounting of these transducers, the same uh, uh, transducer, uh, transducer mounting kit is used, like for the uh, digital transducer, digital rotary. Okay, now. Um, we will go through a few case studies uh, which shows uh, examples of the transducer mounting on different types of the circuit breakers. Okay, uh, these types of light tank circuit breakers almost always have convenient place for rotary transducer mounting. Um, ABB LTB type of the circuit breaker is exactly a live tank. And in this case, a rotary transducer is uh, mounted uh, in the center of the rotating shaft, which uh, transmits uh, mechanical energy from the operating mechanism to the rod of the uh, main contacts. As you can see, uh, for the uh, mounting of the rotary digital transducer. Standard mounting kit accessory is used. Clamping base, articulated arm, carrier, coupling, mechanical adapter, and the digital rotary transducer. Also, this is example of the linear, of the rotary transducer mounting on the live tank circuit breaker but uh, on the Siemens uh, GAP type. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, <clears throat> beside the uh, uh, standard mounting kit, we also need a universal adapter for mounting of the rotary transducer because sometimes uh, there is uh, no uh, hole uh, in the center of the shaft but uh, two, there are two holes uh, uh, which are um, symmetric to the center. And uh, in that case, we can directly, we can't dire directly uh, mount uh, uh, adapter to the center hole, but uh, in that case, we use a universal adapter 
which can be filmed by two uh, additional bolts and the our uh, adapter is uh, mounted as you can see here in the shaft of this universal adapter for mounting and the uh, rest of the mounting process is the same like the previous circuit breaker we use a, a carrier which uh, uh, carry this uh, rotary transducer articulated arm which uh, adjusts the position of the rotary transducer and the clamping base uh, which uh, firms uh, uh, um, which firms uh, transducer together with the articulated arm to the uh, solid base of the uh, circuit breaker construction. Okay, this is how to how this looks like from the other angle. Regarding the dead tank circuit breakers, in most cases, they have a convenient place for linear transducer mounting, which allows connection of the transducer to the main shaft directly connected to the main contact system. In this way, the movement of main contacts is most credibly measured. So, this is example. Now we'll go to the following slide to see better how it's mounted. So, for the mounting of the rotary transducer, in this case, we needed four clamping bays, two articulated arms. As you can see one, two, three, four clamping bases, and one, two articulated arms. Linear motion but the dead tank circuit breaker can also be measured by rotary uh, transducer using linear to rotary converter. As you can see here, linear to rotary converter uh, converts uh, linear uh, motion, as you can see here, this road which is a uh, mode translatory. So this converter, it converts uh, linear motion uh, to rotation, but with known ratio. So this converter is uh, connected to the rod uh, of the uh, main shaft, which moves main contact system here. And uh, uh, this converter connects this linear movement to the rotation, which is measured by the rotary transducer. We know the ratio uh, of that uh, conversion, and uh, uh, we can based on the measurement with the rotary transducer, we can calculate the original linear movement of the circuit breaker. Okay, that's all regarding this uh, session. You will, ha you will have available uh, this session recorded as well as the presentation in the PDF uh, format. Thank you very much for attention. Now I will uh, try to answer on your questions.
thank you for your attention one more time.